Hi, I'm Sarah Tilly from Curious Maths. I'm a primary maths consultant based in London and I've got over 20 years experience in primary education. Over the years, loads of parents and teachers have asked me questions and tried to get ideas for how they can help their child or their class remember their times tables. So I thought I'd put a video together which kind of encapsulates all the different ideas and answers I've given over the years. Um, so it's all in one place and you could use it with your child or your class in school. Now this video is all about teaching the times tables. There's a big focus on that teaching side of it. And if you're a parent and you found you've had to relearn your times tables, or if you're a teacher and went back into class and had to relearn them too, uh, it was probably because when you were in school, you weren't actually taught the times tables. In fact, what you were probably asked to do was to recite them out loud, to answer quick fire questions, to do speed tests, things like that. And whilst they have a place in the bigger picture of learning a times table, they're not the only approach. So what I'm concentrating today on is ways that you can teach and support the learners and help your children in your class or your child at home remember the times tables. I hope you find it useful. So what we're going to think about now is why we teach the times tables. What's the point of it? Well, Firstly, it certainly makes mental arithmetic much quicker. So instead of adding the same number lots of times, we can multiply. They also provide a really important building block when the maths gets harder. So when we do harder methods of multiplication, when we start looking at percentages and pie charts, and knowing our facts means that we can actually concentrate on the new learning rather than getting caught up in trying to remember our times tables. Knowing them also builds confidence. I've met so many mathematicians who think they're no good because they don't know it. And of course, the dreaded testing side of it, if they know their times tables, it's going to help with the multiplication times table check and SATs. So here are the expectations in England in year one, two, three and four. And it's expected that year, in year five and six that the children already know all these facts and can use these multiplication division facts and they are ready to apply. Tip one, ensure children recite their times table fully. This is different to just counting, for example, three, six, nine. This is where we ask the children to say the full sentence. One, three is three, two, three is six, three, three is a nine. Now this is important because when they're asked the question, what are three threes? Their brain will say three, three is a nine instead of looking down at their fingers and counting. Whenever you ask a child a times table question, like what are three times three, expect a full answer, three, three is a nine. Top tip two teach the division tables at the same time. Now the national curriculum does stipulate that the times tables and division tables must be taught, but sometimes the division tables get left behind a little bit. So I would like to encourage you to have a go at the same time. Now it might be that you start with the multiplication, do some work on that first, and then go on in the plenary if you're a teacher or a parent at home, then go on to make some connections. So looking at the three times table and see how you can derive the division facts. I also recommend saying the division tables out loud and I would normally use a counting stick with numbers on to model it. Top tip three. I really recommend focusing on one times division tables at a time. For example, if you're a year three teacher, the children need to learn their threes, fours and eights, multiplication and division tables. I would start with the threes. I'd block out two weeks of main class teaching and plenty of mental oral starters and plenaries for the up and coming weeks. By doing one thing at a time, if you think about maybe learning history or something like that, if you started to learn about the Vikings and then suddenly went on to the Romans, you might get a little bit confused with your facts. It's no different in maths. My other top tip is just simply to use any spare time you have to keep on asking the same questions. Top tip four, don't underestimate the need for a pictorial. So when we start with early multiplication, we use lots of pictorials, lots of images to help children understand what multiplication is. But I'm thinking about those children perhaps who are in year five and six and are struggling, for example, to remember the seven times table. Well, we don't really want to just give them loads of quick fire questions and make them recite it out loud because they have been doing that and they haven't remembered it. So 
I really think that no matter which what times table we're doing, there's plenty of opportunities for us to use pictorials to really help children understand the maths and give them an idea of quantity of size and things like that. So here's an example of some manipulatives that you can use for the times tables um, and these produce a pictorial for the child to help them remember more. So if you're a teacher in year four, five and six or a parent uh, with a child who's trying to learn their six times tables for example, you can see how you can bring the structure alive. So what I've got here is I've collected some egg boxes, obviously lend themselves brilliantly to sixes. Um, I've got an array with pegs. I've used some dominoes, so we've got three lots of six and numicon. And what's great about these ideas is that they are countable so if a child is really struggling to remember the six times table take a few steps back help them make the six times table and see what they come up with and there are lots of resources as well out there like this numicon number line that you can use to support with that but don't underestimate the pictorial it might really make a difference So this is an example of how using a pictorial can really support learning those more challenging times tables. Now I'm using real Numicon today, um, but I'm thinking about using these shapes as a visual image, so something that children can remember and, and think about in their heads. So this is an example of three lots of seven. Now the seven times table is quite a challenging one for the children to remember because the answers don't follow a very obvious pattern. But when we use Numicon, we can start to see that the seven is made up of a five and a two. Now I would use this kind of approach with children who are finding it hard to recall the seven times table to give them a bit of confidence because what they'll start to notice is we can calculate three lots of seven by calculating three lots of five and three lots of two and adding them together. So I wouldn't start with this when I was teaching the seven times table but if they're finding it hard it's a good visual exploration into the structure and hopefully if they really start to find it difficult to remember they might use this strategy to help them solve questions. This also works for the 12 times table. So thinking about the 12 times table and children find the 12 times table quite difficult because they think it's a really challenging times table and you've got to be really good at your times tables to know that one but actually once again a visual provides the structure and we can see that the 12 times table is made up of tens and twos and of course we could do three lots of tens and three lots of twos to work out what three twelves are or we could do ten add two add another ten add two add another ten add two. So providing a visual support for children can really help them recognise that memory isn't just the only strategy for times tables and that there's other things that they can do. So I really recommend using these types of images to support learning those harder times tables. Top tip five, fine tune the learning. So there are actually 66 facts to learn in the multiplication tables, not 144 which lots of children think, because lots of children think there are 12 times tables with 12 facts. So although 66 is quite a big number, it is certainly a lot fewer than the 144 they think they have to learn. So the principle of commutativity is really important and it's first introduced in year two and it's understanding that no matter which way around we multiply, we will always get the same answer and I will show uh, an example of that in a moment. But it's also important to focus on the 66 facts and encourage them to realise that they already know so much. So commutativity is really helpful to understand when you're trying to learn your times tables because commutativity simply means that if you were to calculate a question like 2 times 3, you could do that or you could calculate 3 times 2 and you'll still get the same answer. And this is particularly helpful when the maths gets a bit harder. So let's say they were learning their 7 times table and they had to do 5 lots of 7. Well, they start to understand that 7 lots of 5 will give them an equal answer. And Numicon proves that really nicely. So I've got 3 lots of 2 here and 2 lots of 3. It doesn't matter which one I do, I'll always get the same answer. Same idea with pegs, push them together, we can see they are equal in value. And a bar model representation, you can actually add dots to this if a child finds that more useful. A bar model representation, a part, part, whole, also back up this idea of commutativity. So once children have got a good grasp of commutativity and they understand that there are not 144 facts to learn and that they can use 
what they know from the other times tables to help them solve unknown facts. Then we can start to refine and this refining process is really important because it's a confidence builder for children. So I've used the example of the three times table. Uh, there's loads of different ways you can do this. This is, this is just one way of doing it and you can see that I've actually not kept the usual order that you would see. And this grid is all about children filling in their strategy and building on what they already know. So if you have a look, obviously three times one or one times three would be a known fact. They could double that known fact to find two lots of three and double that fact again to find four lots of three and eight lots of three. And a lot of children really enjoy that strategy because they start working on doubling in year one and two. So a lot of them are very confident with it. So it gives them, you know, we can do it, we can solve it. So as you can see, there's a variety of different strategies down here. You might want, if you're a teacher, to children to expand a little bit more um, and give a little bit more detail. But the idea really is that they start to understand that memory isn't the only option. Top tip six, do some pattern sniffing and connection making. So we've already talked about the importance of commutativity, but I think it's really important to give children an opportunity to investigate the times tables and pattern sniff and see what they find out and see what they notice. They always quite enjoy doing that. So create opportunities for children to look at certain times tables, make comparisons, look at the answers, look at the uh, repeated pattern within the ones column, all sorts of things like that. But by unpicking patterns and relationships, they're going to have a better understanding of right answers and uh, therefore obviously spot a mistake. And it's really important to get them talking. Top tip seven, utilise memory hooks and tap into what they like. So when I'm planning with teachers on maths around times and division tables, we always spend a bit of time searching online, looking for times and division table songs and videos and cartoons, things we can put into the lesson to engage the pupils. We talk about actions that we could put in to make uh, the maths learning active with a certain times table. We talk about practical hands-on experiences, like if we were looking at the three times table, collecting things in threes from the classroom. And we always talk about our classroom displays and our working walls and making sure that we've got lots of hooks dotted around to give that extra support. So here are some of the songs that children I work with seem to really enjoy. So BBC iPlayer, there's a whole collection called Super Movers, both for Key Stage 1 and Key Stage 2. Um, the Little Jamaican Man at the Top, very popular. The heat, there's a whole range of times table ones there. Children really seem to like to get up and dance and, and enjoy that. Um, Matt's Rocks, Lots of variety, lots of fun um, songs, and there's apps available for that. And I really like Percy Parker. They're all animated, um, all slightly different, all with a little bit of a theme. So one of my favourites is the ballad of Baby Percy Parker, which is the seven times table. And he uses the context of age as of their seven days in a week. Uh, more. So Mr. DeMeo, quite popular. Um, there's lots of more recent songs that he's adapted. And he's got his own YouTube channel. And just a top tip, really, that whenever I'm looking for times table songs, sometimes I go on to schools' websites because they've already done lots of the work and collected them for me. So just an example there, if you were to go onto that website, King's Furlough Junior School, then you would find a whole selection for each of the times tables. So just a little tip for that one. I just thought I'd share some of um, my favourite sort of cartoons, my go-to ones, and these are really popular with children too. So they're not necessarily for multiplication and division tables, but I thought I'd share them anyway. So we've got Number Blocks on CBBS, really popular with younger children, and lots of teachers have already written lesson plans and got ideas online about how to use that. Uh, Cyber Chase and Odd Squad. Uh, just again immersed in maths so in odd squad which isn't a cartoon uh, they're maths detectives and they have to use those skills uh, number jacks really popular you can find lots of episodes of those on youtube and i've recently heard about monster math squad which is on netflix so it's not a, a british cartoon obviously you can see by the math but um you know it's a canadian tv program and it's all about using skills to get over any obstacles top tip eight don't abandon all prompts because you think they should know them by now. So I work with a lot of teachers in year five and six and a lot of parents too. And understandably, there's a level of frustration when children can't remember the facts they need to know. 
But my best advice would be not to abandon all those prompts because these children have struggled to remember the facts anyway. So more than others, they will need all of those manipulatives, all of those images to help them calculate the times tables. They may need to work in mixed ability pairs. They may need to refer back to maths books, whatever they need. Don't lose those prompts. Top tip nine, when practicing, use variety. So for some children, it takes quite a while for them to be able to recall both fluently and accurately the times and division tables. So I'm a big believer of variety. And I think when you've got to do something for quite a long period of time, whether it be at home or in school, to keep the, your child at home or, or your class engaged, I think variety is really important. So if you're a teacher planning, take a step back from your week and make sure that you've got a variety of types of activities that they might do, pen and paper, practical games, songs, challenges, you name it make sure you do it. So just keep the learning going. Top tip 10, get them talking. Reasoning activities are a great way to encourage children to communicate mathematically about the patterns they see and the structures. Now, times and division tables lend themselves beautifully to spot the mistake in sorting and classifying and always, sometimes, never type of activities because they've got so many patterns within them and structures that you can look at. So I really recommend doing lots of these. You kind of have to know a wrong answer to know whether you've got a right answer. There's plenty of support online for this, so just do a search. You can go to the Enrich website, which has always got loads of great problems. You've got the NCETM mastery documents. There's an example of White Rose on the screen, uh, some problem solving and reasoning from there. And I really like Gareth Metcalfe's IC reasoning range. So have a look around. You don't have to reinvent the wheel. You could also do some specific searches on patterns in the three times table, for example, and build your investigations around them. So those are my top 10 tips for teaching the times tables. I hope you found them useful. Have a look at my other videos on my YouTube channel and head over to my Facebook page, Curious Maths, for more ideas.